Hello everyone, it is me. I am back with a new video, a review. A fucking rat review, would you believe it? Yeah, so I recently finished This Bad Boy, The Midnight Library by none other than the man, the myth, the legend, Matt Haig. I don't even know how to fucking start this video. I don't know what to say. I have never been so disappointed by a book in my entire life. And that is not to say that it's the worst book I've ever read. I've read worse books, believe it or not. But as some of you may or may not know if you've been around here for a while, I am essentially what you would call a Matt Haig simp, all right? I fucking love him. I love Matt Haig. One of my all time favorite books is The Humans by Matt Haig. And I still stand by that. I have recommended this book to you guys over and over again. And I will continue to do so because I do stand by the firm belief that The Humans by Matt Haig is a fucking masterpiece. How to Stop Time is also a really good one. And I also read The Possession of Mr. Cave. These are the three Matt Haig books that I did read and I loved them. Uh, I have always been a huge fan of his work. I fucking, you know, found his Twitter feed a little bit cringeworthy, but that was about it, you know? But yeah, I, I saw that he was promoting the shit out of this book, The Midnight Library, on his social media. I saw that it won the fucking Goodreads Choice Awards, man. I was so psyched to read this book and I had such high expectations for it. And they just weren't met. They weren't met. And I gave it a two out of five stars on Goodreads. Had it been anyone else, it might have been a 2.5 or a three, but really, Matt Hay, I expected more from you, my dude, okay? So I finished the book and i didn't really know what to think i was like this has just ruined my perception of this man forever it is a dull honestly pretty badly written book full of obvious overstatements i actually sat down and i was like okay i'm just gonna type out a few things so i don't get lost in what is eventually going to turn out into a, a just a rant you know so i think i got a lot of my hatred out <laughs> yeah um i hit the 1500 word mark so, um, <laughs> I have a lot to say. I'm not gonna go through absolutely everything because a lot of this is just like me getting angry, essentially. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about the Midnight Library because one of the things I thought was really interesting was the idea, okay? Matt Haig has not disappointed me in the sense where he always comes out with some very original, kind of quirky and interesting premise to his novels. He always has very good ideas and this was one of them. Basically, the Midnight Library tells the story of a woman in her mid-30s called Nora Seed. She is depressed. Nothing in her life is going the way she wants it to. And she decides to kill herself. Instead of dying, however, she is transported to the Midnight Library. Full of books. Full of books of stories and lives she could have lived if she had made slightly different life choices. So in one book, she is like an Olympic swimmer. In another, she is a glaciologist. Glaciologist, I don't fucking know. It's just such a cool and interesting idea that I'm mad. I'm mad at how badly executed it was. If this sounds like something you would potentially want to read, go for it. I actually checked the Goodreads reviews after I finished this um, and the vast majority of people liked it. Honestly, they did. So you might be one of them. Would I recommend this book to you? No, no, I would not. I would not. The only reason why I could possibly recommend this book to anyone is if you are a fan of like fucking cringy Instagram captions, if you are someone who would be willing to pay 20 bucks for what is essentially Matt Haig's Twitter feed, really, with just a a main character slapped onto it and oh boy what a main character we're gonna get into that but yes this if you would like to read it fucking go ahead um i just would not recommend it okay okay i feel so let down by him personally i'm like how could you do me like this my dude like anyway it's just it, let's just get into it let's just start with the things i did enjoy about this book so what did the Midnight Library actually have going for it? The writing was... <sighs> it was easy, okay? It's easy to get into it. It's easy to keep reading. It's very... You don't get tired reading this is what I'm saying, you know? This isn't fucking Emmanuel Kant. You can sit down for five hours and you feel kind of like you're watching a TV show. It's very fast paced. Very... It's got a very kind of YA vibe to it. Yeah, I'd say it's an easy, engaging read, okay? That, that is one, one good thing. What else? 
The idea is cool, I've already said that. I really like the idea of the Midnight Library. I think it's really fucking cool. Badly executed, but a cool idea. I liked the character to some extent of Nora. Like Nora is the main character. She has a gay brother. Uh, that's his only personality trait. But I did like the fact that it was done like kind of naturally, you know? It wasn't like, he is my brother and he is gay. I like the fact that it was <laughs> brought in a way that is like, oh yeah, he's married to, I don't know, like fucking Jeff, I don't remember his name. Um, and it, I think it was a very cool way to be inclusive without being actually like, this is my gay brother, look at how inclusive I'm being with my characters. I thought that was cool. I like the fact that what triggers Nora to commit suicide is the death of her cat. I think that was very well made in the sense where a lot of times if someone is depressed, it's not necessarily are you going to be this big event that pushes them over the edge even though it is like a pretty bad thing to have a pet die you know i would be fucking distraught if my cat died i do think that it was good you know in the sense where you know she does lose her job uh she d isn't in touch with her best friend her brother isn't speaking to her these are all terrible things but what really pushes her over the edge is the death of her cat and i thought that was a very clever way of demonstrating the kind of irrationality of depression and suicidal kind of tendencies where normal people don't commit suicide if their cat dies but that was just you know that was the straw that broke the camel's back and i thought that that was a very clever way of showing the grip that depression can have on the person and the last positive comment that i can make about this book is that it could have been worse so yeah we're moving on to the shit i hated about this book first of all let's just talk about the characters themselves okay because i have some shit to say first of all the main character okay nora fucking seed i'm sorry but is she some kind of a joke what if i told you that this bitch right here could have been an olympic swimmer a glaciologist also could have been in a famous band because she got some sort of deal with a music producer so that she didn't take and she's also just really smart and like studied philosophy does this just not breathe i'm not like other girls because that's what i'm getting from this really it is there's literally nothing that nora can't do except not be a fucking moron apparently she's so unlikable and she reads like a ya protagonist and a particularly bad one at that. This is a woman in her mid ass 30s, like, excuse me? It's, it's so painful to read from her point of view. Every few pages, she has some sort of revelation that is so deep, and she just like ends up monologuing about it for like five pages to whoever's in her company at that time, you know? That's the sort of shit you see on like mugs, <laughs> you know, like stuff printed out, like, you know, those like mugs of tea that with like those inspirational phrases written on them? That's what, me that's what it makes me think of, okay? The side characters my god they're so shallow and underdeveloped it is actually funny like it's genuinely for all they brought to the story they could have been furniture it wouldn't have made a difference the husband could have been a table the brother could have been a i don't know like a gay chair or something the best friend like sends one text and yet she's like so important it's just I couldn't tell you a single thing about them apart from the fact that they exist and their names and that some of them are dicks for no reason. You don't know why they're dicks. You don't know why they act in certain ways. And it's just like, dude, <laughs> I don't get it. Her brother is just so petty as well. I feel like her brother is the only like mildly developed character in the sense that, okay, he's gay. And I did appreciate that. I thought it was done well. He just, you know, happens to be gay, but he's also like a massive dick. You know, he like doesn't speak to Nora anymore because she, could have been with him in like some sort of band and didn't sign with the music producer because she was getting panic attacks and this son of a bitch is just like oh for fuck's sake you don't want to commit to a life of fame and something you're not comfortable with by then i guess see you never you're not my sister anymore like what what kind of a trash human being? Anyway, I'm gonna like shut up about the characters because I have nothing else to say about them at this point. Let's talk about the fucking writing because that's what got me the most angry about fucking everything. If this reads either like a tweet, like a really long tweet that drags out, you know? I feel like this should have had a character limit, honestly. Or like, you know, a 15 year old who's doing a creative writing piece for their English GCSE. That's kind of what it reminds me of. I think my biggest issue with his writing is that really Matt Haig in this book is just telling you straight up what's going on. He's not showing anything. There is nothing that is left up to the reader's interpretation. It's just, everything is so obvious. It's so difficult for me to accept the fact that this book was written by the same author who wrote the humans it, it, it's just insane to me and i i do not accept it this was try hard really bad writing he just like wanted to be deep and like profound and thought-provoking but it just ended up being garbage try hard 
garbage. If you have ever read a Matt Haig book, you will know that his writing is actually rather simplistic and honestly, it has its charms. It works. It works brilliantly, actually, especially in The Humans. In The Humans, the story is written in such a simple way, but it literally just like grabs you in by the balls and doesn't let you go. You fucking zone out of life and you come out of it and you're like, whoa. <laughs> I need to sit here and think about this. The main character in The Humans just discovers very simple truths about society that seem obvious to the reader. Obviously to the main character, it's just such a foreign concept. And they are just very simple facts about life. Like you are supposed to wear clothes. Some people eat a dead cow. You're not supposed to cheat on your significant other. And it's just, you know, all these things that are coming to this main character and these simple realizations, it go hand in hand with the simplistic writing that Matt Haig gives you. It's simplistic yet thought-provoking and it's subtle. Really like that 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 is what makes me mad. I feel like I had I never read The Humans this just wouldn't have been like such a, a bad thing for me and I was just like kind of put it down as a mediocre book and never picked up anything by Matt Haig again. But really like in this in his writing Matt Haig conveys the absurdity of certain societal constructs. It is well made, it is insightful yet written simply and beautifully. This, this is just written in a way that is fake deep, you know? R slash this is deep is what it reminds me of. Another problem that I have with this is that what the fuck is even the message of this book? Because that is uh, very much a me thing, I guess, because everyone's experience of mental illness is different. You guys are aware of the fact that I have had my own struggles with mental illness, so I am not about to say that everyone's experience is the same and that my experience will be reflective of anyone else's experiences. But also, if you are writing a book about mental illness, you have a certain responsibility. I, I don't understand what he was trying to do here. And it is shocking to me because he has struggled with depression. He has struggled with suicide. He's been extremely open about it. He's written non-fiction about depression, for fuck's sake. That is why I struggle to understand how he could come out with this garbage. I just don't get what the message is supposed to be. Is it live your life free of regrets? Or is it just just, oh yeah, just attempt suicide and like you're gonna go to this magical fucking library, you'll wake up, you'll realize you want to live and all your problems will be fixed and no more depression. It's just, depression just flies away. Depression has left the chat. I have news for you, buddy. That's not how the world fucking works. Like, actions have consequences and a suicide attempt certainly has consequences. Whether it's successful or not, like this book was just... It didn't even, it looks like Matt Hay didn't know what message he was trying to send. Because I hated the ending of this, I'm sorry this review is all over the place, but in the end, Nora just like goes through all these fancy fucking lives, she's like not happy being a superstar, she's not happy, because there's no pleasing this bitch, by the way. And she like wakes up in her like original life and she's like, oh, I don't want to die anymore. And she like stays alive and like all her problems are magically fixed, um, because that's obviously how it works, right? You attend suicide, you wake up and everything is fine and fucking dandy. But no, like Nora, should have fucking died at the end of this. She, I feel like this should have been the ultimate regret. Like, fuck, I could have had an amazing life and now I can't have it because that would convey something so much deeper and stronger to the reader. All that happens in this book is that she gets this cheesy revelation that she wants to live after all and then she wakes up and this action of taking her own life just should have been the ultimate regret. Displaying like the irreversibility of it. And th another problem that I have with it is just like the way it ends. Okay, say you want to keep her alive at the end of the book and you want a happy ending. Sure. This just was badly done from beginning to end. It was badly done. I'm going to relate this to my own struggles for a hot minute. I haven't struggled with depression, but I have struggled with bulimia. And my bulimia has straight up ruined my life. It really has. And every time I engage in self-destructive behavior, which is either abusing laxative or self-induced vomiting, I do so with the fear of very severe health consequences just hanging over my head. But I do it anyway because I can't help it because it's a fucking mental illness. And if all my problems in my life were just magically fixed, I would still have bulimia. I would still be a rampant bulimic. And the thing in this book is that she wakes up and all of the problems in her life are solved. Her only friend just starts talking to her again. Her brother is nice to her again. She gets her job back. Honestly, I'm fucking surprised a cat didn't fucking resurrect. Um, and then, oh, cool, I'm happy now. Like, I just attempted suicide and like all my problems are fixed. Therefore, I do not have depression anymore. Am I doing a bad job of explaining this? What I mean is that depression is the problem. The problems outside your depression are irrelevant. 
What is Nora going to do once she has another argument with her brother? What is she going to do if she has another argument with her friend? What is she going to do when she loses her next job? Because those are the issues that were fixed, not the depression itself. In Midnight Library, Nora doesn't work on herself. She doesn't try to fight her depression. Just fixing problems in your life, very minor, shallow problems when you think about it. Fixing these problems does not fix depression. Do, do you, does anyone think I'm crazy? Am I, am I going crazy? <laughs> the only thing that makes depression fucking stop is an outrageous amount of time spent treating the disorder. A refreshed outlook on life with sure, you, you, can, you can argue that Nora has that, but she doesn't fucking spend any time working on fixing her disorder. It's just like, oh cool, waking up in a happy little life now. Let's just, we're fine, we're cool, everything is okay now. This review is making me realize that how fucking bad this book was. Like, I hope that I'm just like too dumb to understand the message behind this book. To me, it's like, fix the problems you have in life and huh, no more mental illness, good news. Fucking wish it was that simple. Fucking wish I would stop being bulimic if I lost 10 kilos, but that's not how it's gonna happen. If I lose 10 kilos, it's not gonna make my fucking bulimia disappear. It's the same for Nora. Like, her problems being fixed aren't going to make her depression disappear, but I feel like I've banged on about this for a long, long enough time. I'm just like a little bit... <laughs> Heated, I guess you could say. So what do I think could have been done better? Nora should have died. It would have made us as readers realize the consequences of such a drastic action. I think that Nora dying would have added at least two stars to this book because at least we'd have had a fucking moral behind it. But yeah, again, admitting that you want a happy ending and you don't want Nora to die. Nora just should have used her revelations to work on the underlying issues of her mental health and decide to work towards being happy rather than just waking up happy. That's just, that's if you want a happy ending, that's what it should have been. The fact that she slides into different lives and is disappointed every time or whatever, could have been so much briefer. It could have been like half of the book. And then the other half of the book would have been her taken her experiences in the Midnight Library, taken what she has learned in these experiences in, in the Midnight Library and apply that to actively treating her disorder. I think that that would have worked so much better. It would have worked so well to see Nora be like, this is fucking hard. I know that I'm gonna wake up and still have depression. I know that I'm gonna wake up and still have these issues, but now I know that I want to fight it. I, that could have been so good. That could have been so, so inspiring. Now we're just gonna move on to like minor shit. That isn't really problematic at all, but that's just fucking annoying me, okay? First of all, about the writing, I have my notes here. Okay, so there's a part at like the beginning of this book. I don't wanna fucking even open it again, okay? You're just gonna have to find it yourself. But you know, someone says something about like coal turning into diamond if you like apply enough pressure to it. And of course, Nora being the smart ass that she is and like knowing fucking everything. She's just like, well, no, actually like, I'm not gonna bother telling you this or telling you anything of substance, but you, you know that coal doesn't actually turn to diamonds, right? And like two lines later, it's like Nora, she pushed her hair, like her coal black hair behind her ear or some bullshit like that. I'm like, is this some kind of a joke? Because that is literally the most obvious kind of we're talking about coal and it's my coal black hair and I'm never gonna turn into a dime. Like, bitch, what? I could have written something better and I'm a shit writer. Also, this is a spoiler, a massive spoiler, but you're here now, you know, like, she left her life as a glaciologist because she kissed a guy that she was really into and they had sex and the sex was bad and that disappointment of bad sex was just a good excuse for her to go back to the midnight library. Excuse me, ma'am, but what? I've seen your root life, Nora. You're in no position to complain about bad sex. In this same like glaciologist life, right? She like is about to get mauled by this bear and she's like, oh yeah, okay. And then like she has like <laughs> three seconds of bad sex and she's like, better yeet myself off this glacier I'm studying. Oh, honestly, this is just, it's so bad it's good. <laughs> also like the only life that she's happy with before getting back to her root life is when she's married to like a surgeon, <laughs> lives in a big house, has a well-behaved daughter who is just like the sweetest thing ever, a new cat and like 
she is a stay-at-home mom who can also like teach philosophy in her free time. And like, bitch, is that what it takes to make you happy? Because holy shit. First of all, anyone who knows a surgeon, or who doesn't know a surgeon, by the way, knows that surgeons don't have time to be family men, okay? They just don't, they spend their life at the hospital. Literally, like, the only way this book could have had a worse ending would have been if she had stayed in this like perfect married to a surgeon life but anyway i'm just gonna stop here because my head is starting to hurt i am upset i am just not a happy chap so i'm sorry guys but i'm gonna end it here if you read this book and loved it please let me know why do you think that i'm being too nitpicky because honestly i didn't mean to hate this book i didn't mean to be a bitch about it i thought i was gonna love it that's why i fucking read it Ugh. but anyway I, I guess shit happens let me know guys in the comments what you thought of this book if you've read it i will see you guys soon okay bye